First of all, just sum up what, what Novak has, has achieved today. What, is, what are you most happy about and impressed by from him? I mean, 24 Grand Slams. You know, it, it, I like this press conference because, you know, that means he won a Grand Slam. You know, it's... <laughs> uh, and now, <coughs> you know, it's a pity, you know, for the Wimbledon, you know, one, two point up and down, you know, you could have uh, all four, but uh, let's not be spoiled, you know, he won, he achieved something amazing, you know, he came here and made 24 Grand Slams and uh, still uh, still hungry, still breaking records, still playing unbelievable tennis. It's just nice to watch from up there, you know, just have a good seat and enjoying myself. Matt. Yes. Settle in. Everybody yeah. settled in now? Good. Matt. Hey, go ahead. Matt Futter. Um, what, uh, you, said, you mentioned Wimbledon before. What was it like when you first got back on the court with him after Wimbledon? Was it completely in the past, or was he cranky or determined or what what is that bounce what was that period of bounce back like and what did you talk about and he's always cranky on the course so yeah <laughs> doesn't matter him or not uh we came to cincinnati so it was not mentioned one time that wimbledon it's past when you lose it's past you know you can't get it back that day carlos was better player and he won very simple so we came to cincinnati prepare for this tournament, he won Cincinnati, so you know he's the guy who's just forgetting the things and moving on. That's why he's so good. That's why this uh, couple of uh, what four and a half weeks in the states, and he was happy that he can he could play here. So it was really really enjoyable and 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 fun. Bill, hi Gordon. Uh, first of all, could you speak a little bit more loudly, please? Yeah, sir? sure. Sorry. Um, Bill Simons, Inside Tennis. Um, Novak is one of the most fierce, most skilled competitor any sport has ever seen uh, for, for decades. Where does that fighting spirit come from? Is that something he can work? He works on, or is it just from who he is as a person? Could you talk about that and share? I don't think you can work. On that, it's you are born. You know, you some people who are born. He's a genius. He, you know, is one of kind. Not too many people in this world like him in sport wise, and this is one of the biggest achievement in the sport history. Not you know, we're not talking about tennis. We're talking generally in sport, and he is a winner. He is the guy who is. Uh, Motivating himself, he had luck to have a guy like uh, Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer. They came before him, so they pushed each other. But uh, he is a born winner, and he, he, for him, word. When you tell him you cannot do something, it's even worse. Then he's gonna show you that he can do it, and it's no, no excuses. He always try to, to find a way how to win, how to fight, even when he's uh, not feeling well. Injured, no injured, uh, and it's just something. Uh, I cannot say that we are all like that from Balkans, mm -hmm. because we are not. But he is one of kind, and that's why he's the best. He is, he is, he is something that, uh, who knows when ever is going to be born, you know. Brian. Sportsman like that. S sorry, Brian. Brian. Brian Lewis. Um, I guess digging down on that answer, I mean, when you talk about not feeling well, was that sort of mentality in your mind on display uh, tonight where obviously the first set goes the way the first set goes, but it looks like he wasn't feeling at his best in the second set, stretching out the legs and the hip and all of these things. Was that mentality most on display during that time when he had to fight through this? Uh, yes, yes. I mean, he had a little luck because uh, Daniel gave him a first set. I mean, that break in the second game was like a gift. And it was very, I mean, <laughs> with Daniel, it's, uh, you know, you have to always be careful, you know, he has these games. But uh, it was very, a lot of rallies, a lot of uh, tough points. And then in the second set, uh, 
actually it was amazing how he how he won that set. You know, I thought <laughs> was not looking well. He was a little lucky with some. I mean, not lucky. I don't say lucky. He, he played some unbelievable shots actually in the end, coming to the net. Uh, some unbelievable uh, volleys at the net, a set point for Medvedev. He read him well at the net. Uh, and then tiebreak was uh, already back then. He, he kind of regained his, his uh, energy and he was much better. And that tiebreak was crucial. That tiebreak was crucial in Wimbledon. The most crucial, if he win tiebreak in Wimbledon, there will be 3-0. Same today, if you lose that tie break, it will be a completely different match, completely different outcome maybe, and completely different match. After that set that he won, was just a question how fast it's going to be the third set. And uh, even he got broken, was I knew it is going to break back soon. Deal. Neil McLennan from the Daily Mirror. Do you think there's any chance when Goran wins his, sorry, when Novak, excuse me, if Novak wins his 25th Grand Slam title, whether that's in Australia or soon afterwards, he'll say, that's great, thanks very much, I've achieved all I wanted to do, I'm done. Uh, that question you have to ask him when he comes very soon. I don't know, I, I don't think so. No, no. He is planning to play Olympic Games in Los Angeles, so uh, <laughs> it's, it's 2028. So it, it, uh, you know what's going in his, his head. It's like uh, 24 hours, something that to achieve. So I don't think so. Howard. Hi, Goran. Howard Fendridge from the Associated Press. You know from having been a player and doing it what the grind is like of a Grand Slam tournament tournament after tournament, year after year. Are you surprised at all what Novak is able to do at this age and keep winning? Maybe I would be surprised if I'm not so close to him and see what he's doing. Uh, no, I'm not surprised. He's just enjoying it. He likes the challenges. Like you asked me, 25, yeah, if he wins 25, he's going to think, why if I win 25, why not, why not 26, you know? So it's always one more, something more. He's taking care of his body, he's taking care of everything, every single detail has to be perfect, prepared. And, uh, you know, he's never happy on the court. I don't know if he's that good or bad, but uh, not good for us. <laughs> but generally, you know, he's, you know, he's just, uh, this drives him uh, through and, and he wants more and more. And that's why he's, uh, he wants to everything perfect to be on the court, on the practice and, uh, that's why he's having unbelievable results. Two more questions in English. One, and Steve. <laughs> uh, Daniel, you have a stretch in your list. Uh, oh, sorry, in English. Uh, Maybe they've joked on the podium, him winning 20 singles and one slam. You have won 22 singles in one slam. Is it that time uh, joking in the team uh, with the numbers of the tournament? I mean, not joking about the numbers, you know. He's he, he taking the numbers, he's taking numbers very serious, you know. So, and uh, it's always something more to achieve, you know. I know it's not easy to motivate yourself for the smaller tournaments. It's always Grand Slams, the Olympics are for him the most important. But uh, to play well at the big tournaments, you have to motivate yourself on the smaller tournaments and uh, to put yourself ready and, and competitive for the big ones, like he did in Cincinnati. And, and he came here playing uh, very good tennis after that unbelievable match with Carlos in Cincinnati. That helped him to maybe overcome Wimbledon and just give him some more confidence for this one. So numbers are very important. Steve, last question in English, please. I looked up at you, Goran, a lot with, uh, relating to his toss. I can constantly see you raising that. Tell, tell us about, because that went on throughout the tournament, the ongoing struggle maybe with the toss at certain times because he'd get frustrated. if he made, Like the game when he got broken in the third set, he made one for serve and it was a double fall, and he looks at you, and I see you constantly doing that. Talk, talk about that a bit. Yeah, yeah, when he gets kind of, I don't know, nervous or something, he, he is not tossing the ball, you know, he's just tossing too too far in front and uh, rushing and... Uh, but then, you know, he needs something different, you know, I'm telling him toss, uh, he needs to process that in his head, you know. Then after he lost the serve, I don't know, he had a little fight, 
you know, he was screaming up there, but then he focused, he broke back, and then he served actually much better next game and game uh, to win uh, to win a match. But uh, happens a lot to him, just you know, out of nowhere when he's uh, when he's a little nervous. His ball toss is going too much in front, and then he's bending too much. So it's, but it's uh, things, you know. He's also human being, you know, and uh, can happen also to him, you know.